As we travel up and down the river and we talk to the um, lock keepers, there's lots of conversations about the environment agency's um, uh, dealings with the river and how things are and, and is it improving or, or going downhill. And it, it seems to be very opinion led. I mean, I don't know if they ever dredged the river up here. It's been suggested that perhaps in the past they did. This chap from EA, senior bloke, and uh, everybody's after the same why the hell don't you do dredging? Why, you know, yeah, they dredge this yeah. river for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's gone downhill rapidly. Um, when I started, they still did a bit of dredging. They do minimal dredging now. On the islands, just upstream from where we are now, uh, there, were, there are two separate islands, and he used to be able to drive between the two of them. Uh, and then the tree fell down, and now it's all silted up. So, no, I don't think... Nothing's maintained the way it used to be. The maintenance doesn't seem to be as um, prevalent as it once was. We're getting cases of, of more people grounding. Some people argue that there's not enough dredging going on. Probably more than half of the people that are running it have never done a day's work on the river in their life. So what on earth do they know about it? Well, the uh, management of the Thames now don't have a full understanding of it. Um, those of us who work on it and, live, and use it regularly have a good understanding, but uh, I think a lot of people uh, just think of it as a sort of a quiet little stream that just runs through England. It is so bad, they've got four or five marker boys marking the channel. The channel is a fraction of the river. The bank opposite the boys is overgrown. The lock cut, I couldn't believe it yesterday, the lock cut used to be a mown bank, and now you can't cut the mowing bank because you can't use a fly mow on a rope anymore. So you now got trees coming up and coming part of the way across the lock cut. So everything's getting narrower and narrower. The budget for the Thames um, has been reduced over the years um, from the Environment Agency. So I, I think it would be a benefit if we could see a higher presence of the Environment Agency patrolling our waterways, specifically the Thames. The Environment Agency have this dream of people sitting in offices, comfortable offices, you know, enjoying a lovely career, progressing up the ladder. And every little bit of the work is done by those contractors. They do it, and there's no responsibility for us. They do it, and if they do it wrong, we'll phone them up and tell them that we're not leaving this office. I think there's too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Well, let's face it, I think there's quite enough of them working on the Environment Agency. Perhaps they could uh, get a decent pair of boots along and get along there. You know, I just find that with half the people running this organisation now, most of them are just falling out of college. They are, they are useless. They're beyond useless. I think for the fee you pay for your licence every year, like clockwork, 
they should do something because I don't see any changes. It's a, it's, I think they're just trying to set up a way of collecting money for people to park boats like they do with cars. There's not so many people on boats that they can't figure out how to do the infrastructure maybe. Now we've got no communication whatsoever. Um, the worst stretch at the moment is between uh, Temperate Bridge and Mushy. I can't go through. Scratches on my roof. I've got scratches on my window. And the other thing is, if you get an advert coming the other way, um, it's made it uh, difficult. And um, we still love the Thames, but it's, it's a shame they don't do some more maintenance. In particular, the shoals. Instead of um, years ago, they've come and dredge. Um, even up above Letchelade, right up to Halfpenny Bridge, they used yeah. to go up and do it. Now all they do is put out boys. Uh, the main decline is, uh, I have to say, the way the river is cared for. Dredging suspended in 1996. We were told all oh, the riverbed takes care of itself. It does not. When we raised the issue of the dredging, he said there is no need for dredging because the Thames is self-dredging. It is self-dredging. There you go. The last few years, um, it's gone down a little bit regarding overgrown trees and shallows, which is a real shame, uh, particularly above Oxford. But we still love it. We are out every weekend. I did say what would happen if, if our boat club of 120 members refused to pay their licence. What would happen? But I didn't get a reply. The shame about the EA is they're seen as a problem, they're not seen as someone to help. And as, and as an organisation that's dedicated to encouraging people to use the river more, we should be close as the EA, working with them closely and they're helping one another. But the fact that I have very little contact, if any, says it all. And in the ten years I've been here, I've seen how much the river's changed and silted up. And there are parts now that are not really usable, that were navigable ten years ago. Well, you don't see them very often these days. Um, the Environment Agency now, I don't know, they, they seem to be more after your money than anything else. They're not particularly <laughs> interested in looking after all the lock keepers have disappeared. It's not what it used to be, the old river. Patrolling on the river has completely, uh, virtually disappeared. The Environment Agency uh, do patrol occasionally on, on busier reaches, but I think it all comes down to the will and the, and the way and the, the cost of enforcing any of the rules. And uh, maybe some of the <coughs> rules and regulations and the Acts of Parliament need to be revisited because they're probably steeped in history. In fact, somebody, the last person the AI spoke to who came down and I talked about the bridge um, said to me, absolutely, I, th I think he was joking, but he said, if you could hang it from the sky, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Good, thanks. <laughs> that's, that's long gone, common sense. Long gone, and you're not supposed to use it either. No, Even you're, not, if you've you're got not allowed to use it. You're not allowed to use it. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you, you can't write it down, that's the thing. You can't put it in the method statement. Not everyone's boat wise. You know, you'll find you think, oh, they shouldn't have that rope around their neck or something. We always want to attract people to the river, and um, sometimes I feel that there's um, not enough good news about it. You know, I, I listen to the uh, people who moor here, and, and they complain maybe about the locks, about the water levels, they might complain about the trees. It's, it's these hired boats, I don't know, they go three times around the island and then I have to drive them, I see them coming, I'm like, oh, I'll stay clear of them. Yeah, yeah it's always, it's, they're all full of captains and no sailors. There's a lot of waivers on boats, usually most people wave, it's kind of, they've all got their different kind of waivers they go along.
Richard has had more experiences with bad experiences with like people falling in and he saved five people in five years, five people's lives, which really is a credit to him. Uh, received for Richard and myself, I know why he deserves it and it's still a mystery why I've got it. Very proud, it's by a section of the Inland Waterways boat people, not just the Thames but all of England, which is lovely, it's lovely for Abingdon Lock, it's lovely for the group of volunteers that work with us here, a grand bunch of lads, we all get on together and like I say, I'm very proud and I know Richard is, although he's too modest to say so. Hello. I think it's a great shame that the lock keepers are gradually being phased out. It would be wonderful to have permanent lock keepers again. I think that's an unrealistic expectation. But to have a trained, diligent lock keeper looking after the weirs and locks is a great asset. Bye bye now. See you soon. Bye bye. It used to be that the lock keepers used to clean the walls of the lock the whole time and they were immaculate. You'd go in, the lock would be beautifully looked after. Now there's mould on the side of the walls and you get filthy uh, every time you use it. Less of a problem on a shallow lock, but somewhere like Marlow Lock or Bolter's Lock where it's deep, it's, uh, it's not a pleasant experience and it used to be so much better. So that's one of the consequences of not having the lock keepers. Years ago, 